Vix presents Dangerously Yours, a half hour of romance and adventure starring Victor Jory in Bothwell of Scotland. You know, more and more millions of people are using Vicks Vatronol nose drops to relieve distress of head colds. Benefit by their experience. And now, Dangerously Yours. I am adventure. In my name, men have traversed the highways, the byways, the skyways of the world. I am the fire that burns in the heart of youth, that makes men dream and dare and conquer. I am dangerously yours. Today, follow me to the Scotland of the 16th century, when Mary, Queen of Scots, was 23 years old and one of the most beautiful women in the world. And a man came storming into her court and into her heart. Bothwell of Scotland. Exiled by your father, but your humble servant, if you will have me. You are my father's enemy, my lord. I will not be yours. I bring to your banners my army. I bring to your name of honor through many generations and a loyalty you need ne'er question. I have need of a loyalty such as that. But you have been considered an enemy in this court. This court would consider any honest man an enemy. I resent that statement, sir. It is ne'er wise to resent a statement, your majesty, before you have examined it. I tell you, this court is like a rotten apple eaten from within. Your nobles are a treacherous lion thieves, and everyone in the world knows it but you. My noble thieves? Get out of this court before I throw you in irons. How dare you stand before me and attack my people in such a manner? I dare because I'm a Scot, and it makes my blood boil to hear the things that are going on in Scotland. I come back because, regardless of my differences with your father, I love my country and my country's crown. And the wrongs done to the crown and the country burn deep into my own honor. You are a woman, and young, and in a sense defenseless. And you are surrounded by an unscrupulous court that is constantly using you to its own advantage. I admire your loyalty, but you must know these things are true. You must have suspected them. If I have, I'll not admit it to the world. I am your countryman. Your fight is my fight. Will you let me stay? Will you let me fight for you? Very well. Here's my hand on it. Your Majesty. Your Majesty, may I intrude for a moment? Certainly, my Lord Bigley. Have you met the Earl of Bothwell? Lord Bigley? Your Majesty, is it your wish that we welcome this... uh, the Earl of Bothwell to your court? It is my wish. And why shouldn't you welcome me? Why, since you ask, you were declared outlaw in Scotland... You went against the king. The king was wrong. He was under the influence of traitors in his own court. Are you daring to imply I that... I don't bother with implications, Bigley, but only with accusations. I'm here to fight for the queen against any who would betray her. This entire court is loyal to her service. There are differences of opinion on that. If it's true, then this court has nothing to fear from me. Your Majesty, will you not... Will you permit this man to, to voice such insults in your presence? We've heard enough, Bigley. My Lord Bothwell, we are very grateful for your offer of service, and we welcome you to our standards. We hereby confirm your hereditary title of Lord Admiral of Scotland. Your Majesty. You will bring your men here for quartering and make your home in our castle. Thank you, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, good evening. Good evening, Your Grace. May I join you in your walk, or would you prefer to be alone? You may join me. What does a queen think about when she's walking in the gardens in the moonlight? What should a queen think about? Oh, I suppose great things such as... Oh, how much good she will bring to Scotland in her lifetime. What does the Queen of Scotland think about? The Queen of Scotland thinks of her people walking hand in hand in the spring starlight. The Queen of Scotland wonders what it would be like 
to have a village ball and be kissed in the shadow of a yew tree. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm under the spell of the moon tonight. You should not have asked. And I should not have answered. Why shouldn't you think those things? You're young and beautiful. Tell me, where is His Highness, your husband? Donnelly? Hmm? I have no idea. He has little love for me or I for him. He and Lord Bigley rode away just after dinner. Beware of Bigley. I don't trust him. I will. You're staring at me, my lord. I know. It's as though I was suddenly seeing you for the first time, and the wonder of seeing you puts many things upon my tongue, and yet keeps me for saying them. Oh, Mary. How dare you kiss me, sir? How dare you? Throw me in iron, send me back to exile, do with me what you will, but I love you. How dare you? Shall I leave you, my queen, now that I've incurred your anger? Shall I mount my horse and ride out of Scotland? I'm used to banishment. You hate only to say the word. Yes, go. Go and never let me see you again. You're very wise, McQueen. For if I stayed, I'd kiss you again. Having forgotten once you were a queen, I might forget it again. Ah, oh, you're lovely in the moonlight, Mary. Mary, Queen of Scots. Your lips are soft and ripe for kissing. Your eyes are deep with dreams... And I, who only wanted to kneel at your feet, now want to take you into my arms. Good night. Goodbye, Your Majesty. Bothwell! Bothwell, don't leave me. Don't leave me. Already I'm lonely for you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> oh, I can't breathe. Uh, I never laughed so much or ran so much. Imagine the Queen of Scotland running through the streets of Edinburgh. I don't know what got into you me. You were chasing me, if you remember. Oh, so I was. I must watch that. Oh, look, darling. This is the wishing well. Uh, Have you a coin? Have you two coins? We'll throw them in and make a wish. Here you are. Thank you. What did you wish? That you'd always love me. What did you wish? That you'd always want me to love you. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid I'm not my best at dancing. I feel like a bear dancing with a fairy princess. You look wonderful and you dance divinely. And I'm the luckiest girl in the world. I don't like to be the one to have to tell you, Your Majesty, but that lovely little crown of yours is on crooked. Oh. And your court is looking definitely shocked. Heavens, what a breach of royal etiquette. I'll set it straight at once. Oh, I like it crooked. It makes you look like a little girl dressed for a masquerade. Then I'll wear it that way. Always. My Lord Bothell. Yes, Lord Bigley. This court resents your friendship with the Queen. If you'll take my advice, you'll leave this kingdom while you still have a head on your shoulders. Are you threatening me, Bigley? You fool, you ruin the Queen's name throughout the entire world. You're forgetting there's a king in Scotland, and everyone is talking about you now. That's a contemptible lie. No one could be talking because we've done nothing wrong. Go into the city and find out yourself, Bothell. And then get out of this court. Ah, you found it a little hard to prey on the countryside since I've been here, haven't you, Bigley? And you found it a little hard to continue your foreign intrigue since I've been examining the dispatches. That might possibly have more to do with your desire to get me out than your interest in the Queen's reputation. Craig! Craig! Aye, Bothell. Come with me. I want to ride into the city. You see that I've told you the truth. I wonder how long you and I can stay in the same court, Bigley, without me killing you. <laughs> You'll be leaving after your trip to Edinburgh. Come on, Craig. What do you think of your queen, sir? My queen, that hussy. Carrying on with Bothwell behind her husband's back. Fight the wall. Wait, Bothwell. Dinner strike him again. He's drunk. He didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. A man says things when he's drunk he wouldn't dare say when he's sober. Come, let us go elsewhere. The 
the Queen and Bothwell, why I say they're a disgrace to the whole country. What right does the Queen have to act like a barmaid? You're wrong, old man. There has been nothing wrong between them. The Queen is faithful to her husband. Ah, don't expect me to believe that. Or anyone else in Scotland, or in the whole world, for that matter. I'm afraid Bigley was right, Craig. What shall I do? What shall I do? Bothwell. Oh, Bothwell, hold me close. I'm so frightened. I dreamt you rode away and left me. And I woke up crying. Then I saw you walking up and down outside my window and I had to come out. Oh, hold me close. Everything's all right when I'm in your arms. Do you know that last night your people burned me in effigy in the square? How did they dare? How did they dare? They shall be punished. Oh, Mary. Mary, I love you. I loved you the first moment and before the first moment. And even if I ne'er see you again, I will love you forever. You wouldn't leave me, Bothwell. Oh, you wouldn't leave me. I'd save your kingdom for you by riding away. Your people despise me. But they're devoted to me. I believe they'll understand. Let's tell them that I'm a woman and that I've fallen in love. Let's say to them, is there one among you who would give up your loved ones for a crown? Then take my crown. It becomes too heavy for a woman's heart. Mary, I'm going. You can't. I forbid it. You're not a queen with me, you know. You cannot forbid and demand. Do you want pleadings and tears? Then I'll cry. I have no pride with you. I cannot lose. Mary, listen to me. You are a queen and married. Your court, your people can tell you and doubtless have that I'm an adventurer, that I've spent most of my days on the battlefield and I've taken my love where I found it. And now you bear a queen across your saddle. Is that it? Has it all been a lie? Have you been pretending to love me and meaning all the time to ride away one day and leave me dying? If I did not love you, I would stay and reap the harvest and then I would leave you. Not now. But in God's name, what else is there for me to do? If I stay here, you will lose your crown. Suppose you let me worry about my crown. My heart is my own affair, not Scotland's. Oh, my dear. You're very young in the way of courts. It will always be your tragedy that you had to learn to be a queen. And mine that I had to teach you. Bothwell, if you leave me now, I'll abdicate. I'll give the throne to anyone who'll take it. I don't want a world that has no place for you. Oh, my darling, help me work it out. I'll ask Donnie for a divorce. We can try to work it out. We must try. We have a right to happiness. We have no right to anything, you and I. Oh, don't leave me now. Oh, tell me you won't leave me. Tell me you'll never leave me. Father. Oh, Father. All right. All right, Mary, all right. Have it your own way. But we have many enemies now. And they will ne'er stop until they've ruined us. And may heaven help us both. <laughs> In just a moment, we will bring you the second act of Bothwell of Scotland. But first, friends, do you happen to be sniffling and sneezing these days like a good many other people? Well, if you are, and your trouble is due to a head cold, here's a friendly tip that may save you a lot of misery. Vicks Vatronol is specialized nasal medication that quickly relieves sniffly, sneezy, stuffy distress. All you do is put a few drops of Vatronol in each nostril. And at once, this fine medication goes to work fast, right where trouble is. It quickly spreads through the nose and upper throat to soothe irritation. And it opens up the nasal passages to make breathing easier. You'll like the way Vatronol brings relief. And here's a sensible precaution. Always keep a bottle on hand, ready to use right away when you catch a head cold. Yes, Try Vatronol, friends. Just follow the simple directions in the folder. Vicks Vatronol Nose Drops. And now, 
the second act of Dangerously Yours, starring Victor Jory in Bothwell of Scotland. You could still save your neck, Bothwell. You could still ride away with your men and save your life. We have every card stacked against you. We have you in the middle of the most fabulous trap that's ever been devised. And you'll be destroyed the moment we spring it. I'm pretty good at looting traps, Bigley. And you're a slimy little rat sliding around behind people's backs, whispering lies, setting traps. And you didn't scare me one bit. In fact, someday I shall probably have the pleasure of cutting off your head. It's always dangerous to underestimate your enemy, Bartho. We have warned you. Now we shall act. We shall spring the trap. <laughs> Well, wake up. Wake up. Uh, yes, Craig. Come on. What is it? There's something wrong. Didn't you hear that explosion? Explosion? What explosion? There's been an accident. Nay, hey, not an accident. There's been a murder. The king, Darnley, it was sleeping tonight in the royal house at Kirkfield. There was an explosion. He's dead? Aye. They found his body a short distance from the house. Who found the body? Bigley and some of the court nobles who were riding by. You know what they say, Bothwell? No. They say that you killed him. What? What that... That's stupid. I ain't been out of my room all evening. I- I've been sleeping. And besides, no one could possibly believe I would murder the king. They're saying that you did. It's all over Edinburgh. Soon they may be saying it all over the world. Oh, I see. I see. So this was their trap. I must see the queen at once. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe it. But it's true, my dear. The people are saying that I killed him. I suppose I should weep. But I haven't any tears to shed. Isn't that strange? I've hated him for so long that I couldn't possibly grieve for him. Oh, you must never say that again. Mary. Bothwell. Will you marry me? No, Mary. Then people would say we were both responsible for his death. That would be madness. We've always been mad. We began this love fearlessly, paying no attention to what anyone thought or said. And that's the way we must live it. We mustn't let them destroy it for us. This is the work of those devils in your court. This is the result of their fiendish plotting. Let us face them down. At least let us attempt to face them down. Let us not admit defeat. Will you marry me, Bothwell? You're a brave woman. You've made me brave. You're not a good queen, my dear. You ne'er have been. As Queen of Scotland, you should say, this romance has caused anger and dissension and death within my kingdom. And dear as it is to me, it must be stricken from the land and from my heart. As Queen of Scotland, you should say, this country must come above all things we me. And I who rule it must rule it proudly and with dignity at whatever cost necessary to personal happiness. And then... Then I would ride away for you. And you would be a great queen. I could do that if it were not for my woman's heart. I could do that if my thoughts were not molded by a woman's mind. I could do that if you had not taken me in your arms and awakened me. And if you leave me, it will destroy me completely. Will you marry me, Boswell? Oh, do you want to marry me? Knowing by that that act you may bring about your death and lose your throne? Do you want to marry me and listen to the entire world say that I murdered your husband to get your kingdom and that you were an accomplice? Mary would be scorned and hated and despised and very probably killed. Ours has been a great love. A love such as comes to few people. And it's been my one great joy. Let us have what hours we can. And let us not count them or fear what may follow. Let us live them as they come. Until they end. You're not a good queen, Mary. But, oh, 
You're a rather magnificent woman. Oh, that's too bad you weren't the village belle and I your village beau. Don't think of what could have been or should have been, but only what is. All right. All right, Mary. We'll take the hours as they come, and we'll live them until the end. I, James Hepburn, Earl of Bothwell, do solemnly swear to love and to cherish this woman... As long as we both shall live. I, Mary Stewart, do solemnly swear to love and to cherish this man. As long as we both shall live. I tell you, unless we kill Bothwell, it's death for all Scotland. He's bewitched the Queen. Call your men together, we'll march on the palace. I have 500 men waiting in the glen. We'll march on the palace and take Bothwell. If the Queen objects, we'll put her where she won't object. We'll make an armed camp of all Scotland if necessary. Are we going to let the King's murder go unavenged? Come on, we'll mob the palace. Down with Bothwell! Down with the Queen! Kill Bothwell! Kill the Queen! Listen to them. Oh, listen to them. They're celebrating our wedding, my dear. You see how joyous it makes them. Oh, come, come away from the windows. The people have always been kind to me. I never thought they'd storm my gates. Mary, I have arranged passage for you to England. Elizabeth will shelter you until your people quiet down. And you? I'm going to Denmark. Could I not go to Denmark with you? Oh, no, my dear. I will encounter much danger until I'm out of Scotland. But I believe you will be safe once I have left your side. Elizabeth will shelter you, and in a short time you can return to your kingdom. Oh, my darling. Well, we've lived our hours, Mary, and now we've reached the end of them. England. That name is like an icy hand touching my heart. Let me stay here where I belong. If you stay here, you'll be killed. I? Killed? I am the queen. You forget you were a queen, Mary. You forgot you were a queen, and when you forgot, your people forgot. You had no choice but to leave for a time, Mary. You would not be safe for a moment with me, and Elizabeth will only protect you if you go to her alone. Those were her terms. If you wish me to go, I'll go. I do wish it. I wish it could be otherwise. Love for a queen comes high, Mary. I love you now, and will forever. My darling. My darling. Thank you for all the things that I will remember. For your laughter and for your tears. And for the feel of your hand in mine. For your lips. And for your eyes, for the mornings and for the afternoons and the evenings, for listening to my hopes and my dreams and smiling upon them. And thank you most of all for your love and for your trust. You've been all that a woman could be and should be. And for me, there will ne'er be lips or arms again unless they're yours. And now, goodbye, my beloved. Bothwell. Oh, Bothwell. Goodbye, my dear. Bothwell, wait. When will I see you? Goodbye. Where will I see you? Goodbye, my darling. The carriage is at the gate. The queen is leaving now. You can see her from here. I don't want to watch her go. She sent you a note. I have it here. Thank you. My dearest, somehow I think that I will die in England. I will die far from the moors and the heather that I have always loved. And I will be dying for my throne. I 
I left him a note, Martha. I said, I will be a queen now. If I've blundered, they were human blunders. And I'm paying a great price for them. It isn't the throne so much as what the throne stands for. Scotland, yesterday and today, and all the tomorrows of the future. Scottish people who will love the bracken and the thistle. Who will love the small towns and the great cities. The moors, the highlands, the lowlands and the sea. Scottish people who will measure and evaluate their rulers with the unemotional eyes of the future. They will say... They will say Mary made mistakes. Yes. Mary made mistakes, but Mary was not a coward. In her final years, Mary learned the destiny of a queen and met it unafraid. Mary died more queen to Scotland than she lived. She is my queen, New Craig. She is my queen, and no more, my lady. But she will always be the life of my heart. And someday we shall be together again in God's time. Until that time, goodbye, my darling. Goodbye, my darling. Ladies, all too often, women pay the penalty of fading before their time. They're guilty of throwing away their natural youthfulness simply because they fail to live sensibly and get enough of certain indispensable vitamins and iron. Now, don't let that happen to you. Don't you so heedlessly surrender your youthful charm. Just live sensibly and take vitamins plus once each day. You see, Vitamins Plus gives you full protective amounts of all the certain indispensable vitamins and iron that you must have to look and feel as young as you should. Be sure to make it your health charm routine. Vitamins Plus, just once each day. I am Adventure. Next week, listen to one of the most famous romances of all time. A story of burning desert sands and midnight rendezvous. The story of a girl who went into the desert in search of excitement and met that glamorous, exciting lover, the Sheik. Until next week, then, I am dangerously yours. Our script was written by Jean Holloway and directed by Richard Sandville. Mary, Queen of Scots, was played by Gertrude Warner. Music for the series is under the direction of Mark Warno. Be sure to listen again next week when Dangerously Yours presents The Sheep, starring Victor Jory. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.